Welcome to whatever this channel is going to be called, where we disagree with... The Academy. In our year hiatus from YouTube, there were a lot of films that Evan and I saw that we missed the opportunity to give you our opinion on. And being the type of people we are, mm. we just had to write that injustice. God forbid you don't know what I think of Marriage Story. God forbid. So we thought that this morning's Oscar nominations would be a great opportunity to talk about the movies that we love and also just go through the nominees and list our predictions because we love doing that too. If you saw the video we posted a couple weeks ago, we're going to try to limit the negativity on our channel regarding movies this year going forward. So if you hear us bring up a movie that we don't say we didn't see, but we don't have much to talk about, you can probably imagine that we weren't the hugest fans of that movie um, and that's just how it's going to go because it's more fun to talk about the things you're actually passionate about than it is to sort of dig in on the stuff that everyone's already criticizing like, you know, uh, the Joker. Okay, it's actually good. just Joker. No, I'm saying it's actually just Joker, something. The Joker. Yeah. <laughs> so without further ado, we're going to use the Oscar format as our guide for speaking here. It's basically the same order that you hear the winners be announced, but we're going to cut out some of the categories that we don't know as much about to talk about the ones that are probably more interesting to you anyway. I like starting with Best Supporting Actress. We got Kathy Bates, Florence Pugh, Margot Robbie, Laura Dern, and whoever I forgot's not going to win. Scott Johansson? Yeah. Jojo Rabbit, a movie we're not going to talk about a lot right now, but uh, we both agree that Scarlett Johansson is far and away the best part of that movie, undeniably, regardless of what you think of that movie, of her as a person, uh, any of the politics surrounding all of this, that's a great performance. She's really believable and emotionally compelling in that movie. At least I thought. I wish I knew the exact statistic, but it's pretty rare that a person gets nominated in more than one category. It's happened 11 times for oh, actors in the history of the Academy Awards. More interesting, this is Scarlett Johansson's first and second nominations ever. Like, she got two on her first try. That's pretty sick. Yeah, that is sick. That's, that's pretty interesting. Um, Laura Dern's going to win this one for Marriage Story. It's, all the stats are in her favor. It's one of those, like, locked categories, basically. Although, I will say it's kind of cool that Florence Pugh got nominated because that was clearly one of those, like, here's your year nominations. Like, they weren't going to nominate Midsommar. So they're like, well, we can give it to her in this other movie and it'll be basically for both of these things. Yeah. Um, I saw someone compare 2019 for Florence Pugh to, like, 1994 for Jim Carrey. Just, like, an ever-present actor bursting onto the scene right now. So that definitely happened. Other notable things to talk about is I feel like the Best Supporting Actress category is a place where people feel like there were a lot of snubs because a lot of people were expecting that Jennifer Lopez would be nominated or some people were hoping that uh, Zhao Xu Sen from The Fair Moment get nominated or some other people yeah, could slip in here. Results. Zhao Xu Sen? Is this, you, you stumbled over the word farewell because you were clearly oh, okay. thinking about not stumbling over the name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jennifer Lopez would have been great. I am a big fan of Marriage Story and Laura Dern's a lot of fun in the movie and I'm not going to be sad if she wins, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, what a bummer that Jennifer Lopez doesn't get the nomination or the win for this category because... That would be a fun, like, here, thanks for your entire career legacy win. Yeah. Um, also, Margot Robbie, I saw Bombshell. I thought she's good in the movie, but it's interesting that she didn't get nominated for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which I think some people thought was possible. Anyway, we didn't see Richard Jewell. I'm sure Kathy Bates is great in it. Bobby Boucher's mom. Got the nom. Best Supporting Actor is generally next. This one is another lock category. Brad Pitt's going to win for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I don't think anyone's going to feel bad about that. It's a lot of fun. We have both Al Pacino and Joe Pesci slipping in from The Irishman, Tom Hanks for A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, and uh, Anthony Hopkins for The Two Popes. Uh, I think that Al Pacino is my favorite of all these people when it comes to performances, which is interesting. Having recently seen The Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, it's pretty awesome that Tom Hanks got nominated, especially after being passed over for so many great roles in the last decade. Sort of like the possible J-Lo nomination we were hoping for. This one is good because it's a good performance and also just gives him some respect for what he's continued to do for this entire decade. But it'll be Brad Pitt winning. That's that. Yeah. For best original score, we have a lot of like stalwart composers and then one kind of surprise shakeup. We got Thomas Newman for 1917. He's been here before. Alexander Desplat for Little Women. John Williams gets his 52nd Oscar nomination for uh, The Rise of Skywalker. And then we have Randy Newman for Marriage Story. He's been both in original song, original score before. And finally, I'm going to mess this up, but Hildur Galt. Oh man, I'm just... And finally, Hildur got in it here for Joker, who's cool because not only is she new to the scene, but she is a she, she's a woman. It's very rare that women are nominated in this category. She won the Golden Globe. There's a good chance she wins the Oscar. It's pretty cool. But the score for Little Women from Alexander Desplat and the score for Marriage Story by Randy Newman. Randy Newman. I, I always <laughs> want to say Thomas Newman. Um, Wrong Newman. 
A plus, both of those scores. The Joker score is not bad either. It's pretty hype. Uh, everything in this category was cool, except well, did 1917 get nominated? It did. I don't even remember what that score sounds like, and I saw the movie like four days ago. So I will say a movie, a, a movie I saw, and it is recognized in other categories here, but I really liked the score. Was Ford versus Ferrari? I thought that the score mi- managed to mix together a lot of different 60s popular music elements, like 60s jazz, bossa nova, country, western stuff, and what it didn't feel like pastiche it, it was just kind of like cool to settle you into the time period of the movie so that's a, a score i've not heard anyone else talk about but i would love if other people were to check out that movie and a pre, you know give the score a good listen no one's gonna f-ing listen to it <laughs> it's good it's so good um best foreign features next corpus christi is a polish movie that people like a lot that i haven't seen honeyland is a documentary that people love that i haven't seen and i think that's the first time ever a movie's gotten best foreign and best documentary nomination in the same time um, there's also Les Miserables, which took the French nomination away from Portrait of the Lady on Fire, which a lot of people liked this year, including me. Um, I haven't seen Les Mis, but it's cool that at least if France was going to pick that movie over this other one that people love, at least it got nominated, um, and people do love it. Then there's also Parasite and Pain and Glory, which are basically the only two movies that are actually competing with each other, because Parasite got nominated for actual Best Picture, spoiler alert. Um, this is something that happened last year with Roma. If you get Best Picture nomination, you're going to win Best Foreign, basically. Um, so Parasite's going to take this one. Although Antonio Banderas is getting a nomination for Pain and Glory. Another movie that we have not seen. We're like super behind on yeah. foreign language stuff. Some of it is excusable. Like movies like Corpus Christi haven't even come out in the States until uh, like February, I think, is when it's coming out. But but there's really no excuse for us not seeing stuff like Pain and Glory or Honeyland or uh, Les Mis, which I do want to see a lot. But... Yeah, Parasite is great. We'll talk about it a bit later, but we literally haven't seen any other movie in this category because we suck. We have seen every film in this next category, which is Best Cinematography. That's got such movies as 1917, The Lighthouse, Joker, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and The Irishman. Story time. Lawrence Sher is the DP of Joker. This is his first nomination, largely because historically he's just been like a studio comedy cinematographer. He's made a lot of broad movies. He did How to Be Single, if you remember that movie with... Uh, Dakota Johnson. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He did a lot of Todd Phillips movies. He did like the Hangover trilogy and Due Date and all sorts of stuff like that. And he's been one of my favorite cinematographers, Loki, for a very long time. Evan can attest to that. In 2013, I think it was, I did like an entire cinematography project in film school on him because I was so enamored with the strength of his visuals in movies that like theoretically didn't deserve to look as good as they did. Didn't need to rather. Like the Hangover doesn't have to look as pretty as it does, but it does. Um, so I was really, really excited to see him nominated here. I also can't deny that the Joker looks great. They did a really good job of making it somehow look naturally gritty with the colors. That's part partially production design and lighting and stuff like that. But the fact that it's not shot on film, but you would totally not guess that if you watched it, unless you were like Christopher Nolan or something and you were a freak about it. That's really cool. I also love some of the choices they made. I don't even know if this is a cinematography choice, but just the fact that like, the credit in the beginning of the movie where it says Joker on the screen is all like film grainy because they literally overlaid a piece of film of the writing of Joker um, when they were editing instead of doing a digital font the way they normally do with movies. They, they shot it the way that they you would have to shoot this if it really was in the 1980s. And I thought that was pretty cool. Um, amongst other decisions, it's just a good looking movie. 1917 is a one take movie, so I guess it'll probably win. Um, but that would be kind of... No offense, but like kind of a boring win. Yeah, it'd be a little bit of a boring win. Um, other things we can talk about here in this category is there's one movie that you really like the cinematography of. It's, I believe Steve Yedlin in, in Knives Out, yeah? Yeah, Knives Out looks good. Um, but I think Knives Out falls into a similar, falls into a similar <laughs> category of of a movie like The Hangover where it's like... It doesn't have to look as good as... It doesn't have to yeah. look as good as... Like, obviously, you, it's a movie that has a large cast, so it has to be able to legibly cut between lots of people and you can give it lots of points for just that kind of basic... Uh, meat and potatoes composition that you don't even notice how much it helps a movie just makes sense. But then beyond that, it really is a, a gorgeous looking film. Best Animated is very weird this year. There's no Frozen 2. Instead, there's Klaus. <laughs> and also Missing Link, How to Train Your Dragon, whatever, 5, 6, 7. I Lost My Body, and Toy Story 4. Um, the only movie I saw on this list was Toy Story 4. I think it's supposed to win. I think it's supposed to win, yeah. But you like Klaus more, though. And people are really impressed by Missing Link, which won the Golden Globe. So I guess it's an interesting shakeup of a year. It's not a given that Toy Story 4 will win, but Frozen 2 is better than Toy Story 4. Next. Next, we have Best Adapted Screenplay. This is always a very competitive category. No different this year between The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, The Two Popes, and Little Women. 
This is where things get interesting. I have no idea who's going to win this category. Yeah, I really don't either. And I thought there was even a whole thing of whether or not the two popes could be nominated, or that was just a WGA thing. But that it, there was a confusion of if it couldn't be nominated for a WGA award, but that affects Oscar chances. I Obviously thought it, not, was, it got nominated. I thought it was something where it was like it's eligible as original in certain award ceremonies and it's eligible as adapted in other award ceremonies. Okay, that's but for the Oscars. It's el- it's uh, but for the Oscars, it's adapted because it is based on right. Uh, a true event and maybe a piece of literature about it maybe like an, an article about it I, I don't mm-hmm. really know I we could be speaking completely out of our asses but the two popes script is really funny we watched the two popes last week and I think it's like a great sort of like I don't know it, it didn't like stick with me emotionally that much maybe because I don't have much of a connection to the Catholic Church as maybe some audience members would but it is it's a pretty funny movie and it's it's well designed I'm rooting for a little women here because that script is like so perfect, even though it's like really show offy with its timelines, but it's show offy in a fun way. That's why maybe it will win. It feels good to root for Little Women because it is an Oscar type movie and that it makes bold choices. You know, they, they usually reward more is more, and this is a case where more is more works. But then again, the Irishman does that same exact thing of juggling timelines and being ambitious and telling a lot of stories. And I wouldn't be shocked if they give the Irishman this as the one it gets that night. Of like, well, we're not giving it to Martin Scorsese, we're not giving it Best Picture, we're not giving it to Joe Pesci or Al Pacino, we didn't even nominate Robert De Niro, but the script is fire, so we'll give it that. That wouldn't shock me. Um, and I don't think anyone would be that disappointed if that happened, because it's not a bad script. Best Original Screenplay is fire this year. Totally stacked category. There's Parasite 1917, Knives Out, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Marriage Story. Marriage Story is slightly favored to win, and I slightly favor it emotionally to win, too, personally. So that'll be really cool if it does win. But, again, it's another year where multiple-time Oscar-nominated writer Quentin Tarantino is showing up. The fact that Parasite got nominated, a Korean-language movie getting nominated for screenplay, bodes extremely well for that movie succeeding in this and every other category it's nominated because that's just so hard to do statistically. Knives Out is cool because it's a movie that didn't get nominated for anything else. Then they're like, hey, screenplay, which is a big deal. It's not like, hey, we'll just throw it a bone and give it... I don't know. Uh, I don't want to offend anyone. It's notable that this year Ad <laughs> Astra design. got a sound uh, editing or mixing nomination. Yeah. It's a movie that people liked. I don't know if that's the case of them throwing it a bone, but it's a, it feels like a bigger deal that Knives Out has a screenplay nomination, not just uh, a technical award, admittedly. But yeah, this year is uh, Heat, fully. Even 1917, a movie that I think is probably my least favorite of all these is really accomplished as a storytelling uh, feat, and not just because of the directing and the one take, but because it's a uh, whatever hundred and something minute linear real time story, but it still tells like a pretty fulfilling arc for the character, which is cool, man. All right, moving on to the last couple real major categories here, starting with Best Actor. Adam Sandler didn't get nominated. No, he did not. We didn't talk about Uncut Gems, not because we hated it but because it didn't get nominated. Here's what we'll say about Uncut Gems and Adam Sandler. It's fun, and if you liked it, you should definitely see Good Time, which was the Safdie Brothers' previous movie. Uh, But that was pretty crazy, and it would have just been fun from just like the meta standpoint of Adam Sandler getting nominated for this. Uh, But he didn't. Instead, what we got was... Antonio Banderas for Pain and Glory, Leonardo DiCaprio for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Joaquin Phoenix for The Joker, uh, Jonathan Price for The Two Popes, and Adam Driver for Marriage Story. So this is like Adam Driver versus Joaquin Phoenix, but isn't it just Joaquin Phoenix versus no, nobody? Like, isn't he just going to win? I think so. I think he's going to he'll walk away with it. The I Joker like, got like 10 or 11 nominations, and it, he's like the one. Yeah, and uh, and he won at the Golden Globes. I, I know that the Golden Globes happen so close to nominations, so maybe it doesn't affect it, but if it does, that certainly helps. Adam Driver's... His campaign has seemingly lost some steam, so I think it's it's Joaquin Phoenix is just a take. Uh, another really interesting point that this is two years in a row that someone gets nominated for an acting category in the Spanish language movie, which is pretty hype. Like again, it's it's really an uphill battle, as we can see with Parasite. It's really an uphill battle to get an acting nomination when you're not speaking the language of most of the Academy voters, or for an animated movie. Although we're still not there yet. And Antonio Banderas pulled it off, which is pretty sick. I really want to see that movie. Maybe we'll make a video about it when we do. But um, yeah, you can't deny that Joaquin Phoenix is hype in that movie. Maybe you can. There's people that hate it, but he's 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 probably the best part of that movie. 
Next is the Renee Zellweger Award, uh, also known as Best Actress. We have Renee Zellweger getting nominated and winning. Um, mark these words. <laughs> it's not really a bold prediction. Charlize Theron for Bombshell. We've got Scarlett Johansson once again for Marriage Story. We've got Cynthia Irvino for Harriet. And we finally have Saoirse Ronan for Little Women. In this category, I haven't seen Judy or Harriet. So I can't really say much. But the three other performances, pretty good. Good job, girls. This is an interesting case where... At the time, Judy came out, and it is, I believe, the most successful roadsides attra roadside attractions release. So I saw some people online kind of making fun of it, like that this movie's going to win because it's preordained and no one even saw the movie. And that's not exactly true. Actually, a lot of people did see the movie. But it does raise interesting questions of how, when you have certain years, you can have a category like this where people just basically decide, well, I guess Renee Zellweger is going to win. And... Does that mean that people don't even try as hard to campaign for the other actresses? I don't I don't know. I don't know how the money is spent, but it's sort of interesting. So Ronan is now like tied with Jennifer Lawrence for four nominations under 25, which is a huge record or whatever. It would be cool if she won, because she's always getting nominated and never winning. Get to the end now. We have Best Director. It's obviously a huge award. It can pretend a lot about what would win Best Picture, or in many cases, what would also win Best Screenplay, because we have a lot of writer-directors this year such as Quentin Tarantino, Bong Joon-ho, and Sam Mendes. In addition, we have uh, Todd Phillips, also wrote his screenplay. And then, finally, you have Martin Scorsese, who did not, but was probably heavily involved with Irishman. That's the Oscars picks. Uh, the notable exclusion, I think, for us is Greta Gerwig for Little Women. She did a fantastic job not only writing that movie, but arranging it. Or perhaps uh, Noah Baumbach for Marriage Story. What, what do you think, John? Yeah, that was a bummer. For a while, I was like, man, if Greta Gerwig doesn't get nominated... That would be such a big bummer that like they're going to nominate all men, especially when that movie comes out and it's so good. And then I realized this week that I was a little bit off base because I had not yet seen A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, which is better directed than every movie nominated on that damn list, except maybe Parasite and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But like, if you watch that Mr. Rogers movie directed by Marielle Heller and you're not like, wow, every single choice in this movie is incredible and it's all because of the strong direction, then you got to open your eyes, kids. It's not my favorite movie of the year, but it's my favorite direction of the year. And this shit sucks, honestly. Like, when we talk about women getting snubbed for awards, generally we talk about lack of opportunity. Because it's like, okay, well, most movies in general are still directed by men, which is the root of the problem. And we need more movies at all directed by women and people of color so that we can get them nominated. But we are at a point where some of the best movies of the year, specifically when it comes to directing, were from women this year. Um, at least two of them, and the fact that both of them are missing is, uh, I, don't think, I don't think it's necessarily because of sexism, but what it is because of is dumb bullshit and stupidity um, and people having bad tastes. Best Pictures next. Let me see if I can get them all off the top of my head. There's nine movies, so let's get them. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Parasite, 1917, Marriage Story, The Two Popes. Just kidding. <laughs> the Irishman. I got this one, boys. <laughs> Ford versus Ferrari, The Joker, or just Joker. Just Joker. Jojo Rabbit. And finally, Little Women. It's cool that nine movies got nominated this year. They can go anywhere from five to ten. And this was a particularly strong year for movies, in my opinion. So seeing them nominate nine was cool. Especially when I basically loved, like, five or six of the nine. It's very, very rare that the movie I like the most in a given year is nominated or wins Best Picture. It just usually is not how it goes. In the case of this year, uh, Parasite and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood were, like, Far, far and away ahead of every other movie, in my opinion, of things I enjoyed, things I like, immediately went back to rewatch because they were so good and stayed with me and had a large emotional impact. So seeing both of them get nominated and both of them basically being the front runner right now is totally unheard of and it'll be devastating if Parasite or Once Upon a Time in Hollywood doesn't win this award. Furthermore, Little Women and Marriage Story are very clear three and four on my best four of the list. Like, there's, I think there's a big gap between Parasite and Hollywood and then those two. But those two are really, really, really good too, in my opinion. So, yeah, that, that's my biggest narcissistic personal takeaway this year, is my four favorite movies of the year, bar none, for sure, are all nominated for Best Picture, which is sweet. Uh, sometimes, John, I disagree more. This is a case where it's total hive mind. I mean, I'm, I'm in the exact same view on that. So I'll spend my time talking about something a little bit different, which is I want to be that weird guy to mention that uh, Avengers Endgame, I knew it wasn't going to be nominated for Best Picture, but it is of my opinion that you're, we're not going to get a better Avengers movie than that. It's my favorite <laughs> of the four. It's my favorite. Like, 
now we have to live in this world where we like talk about the difference between a solo superhero movie and and like a group team up one. And for me, it's the best group team up one. Uh, I like Marvel movies, but the direction, the writing, just the way that it is this relentless machine giving you everything that you that you want uh, in a perfect package. For me, it did it. So that's like my. You know, that's my popular Oscar bullshit. Also, really like Shazam as far as like a solo superhero movie. That was really cool this year. We, we tend to like horror movies. This was a little bit of a weaker year, but I... We saw Midsommar twice, yeah. but like, I think Hereditary is a stronger movie. Yeah, um, but it's cool to watch it twice. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed Us. Um, we already said nice things about Hustlers and The Farewell, but it's the same again. And I agree with John and that... Not uh, though. <laughs> Not harmless. Now I'm just now I'm just riffing. No, but Avengers Endgame is interesting because a Joker broke the record for most comic book movie nominations today by a lot. Like yeah. Dark Knight had whatever, like seven or something like that, or eight, and then this had like eleven. Yeah. So, yeah, Avengers Endgame didn't get jack shit except for visual effects and maybe one of the sound ones. Yeah, I don't even know if that's true. And it is a really impressive feat. And then beyond that, Knives Out got a screenplay nomination, and it was original, which is, to be fair, it's not adapted, and Avengers Endgame would have been adapted because it's a sequel, right? right. Yeah, it, it would have been. And it's a comic and book. And like Joker was things. considered adapted, even right, though it's not. It's an adaptation of Martin Scorsese movies more than anything else. So Knives Out getting nominated as a, like, hey, you know, this movie actually was a big hit, and people liked it, and it's cool that, like, a movie that's not traditionally oscar gets that screenplay nomination. It would have been pretty cool for... Avengers to get that because it's the biggest movie of all time and the screenplay is really impressive But that's just wishful thinking if you watch this video and you heard us talk about all these categories Then you could probably guess that there's basically one movie nominated for all these major awards that we think is like Really really undeserved and a little bit disturbing that it's in so many nominations um, You can guess on your own what you think that one is uh, but generally speaking I think there were less horrifying picks this year than there were in previous years where we're just like that movie's just bad very few movies nominated in my opinion were just bad even though we wish there were different nominations and especially in directing uh really that's it directing is a huge bummer there's not a ton of movies that are like trash in my opinion that are nominated here today but still a really really white male group anyway evan and i are going to be betting big on the oscars this year because we don't like sports and it's our one thing so Probably tune in in February when we give you an update on what our spread looks like, um, what sort of bold choices we make this year, and if we're going to take away any money or lose like we have in the past. There's really no good horror movies this year. The Invisible Man trailer, one of the best movies all year. <laughs>